everybody. Thank you for joining us here on AEW Unrestricted. I am your hostess with the mostest, Nyla the Riz Rose. I'm here today with my co-host, Aubrey, the best ever, Edwards. And our guest today is Will Washington. Hey, what's up, Will? Wait, how, how does this work? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was here before you, so I took over. Yeah, oh. no, exactly. Because Will was late, like he always is. Yeah. Yeah, well, you could blame Windows PCs for that. Because I was, like, here, and then, like, you ever sit down, and then all of a sudden you go to use something, and it's like, hey, Windows Update would like to run. And I'm like, no, <laughs> not now. I absolutely do not need Windows Update right now. Always at the worst times. Always at the worst time. Uh, before we get started, I do want to remind, remind people that AEW Unrestricted is now presented by our amazing sponsor, Upper Deck. Collect Upper your favorite Deck. wrestlers. What? Oh, yeah. No, show us what you do got. you mean... Life. Upper Deck? Upper Deck. Collect your favorite Upper wrestlers deck. in 2024 Upper Deck AEW and start your training card collection today. Unwrap autograph, memorabilia, or premium tech inserts. Visit UpperDeck.com to learn more. I like that we have the additional sponsorship with Nyla. <laughs> hey. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Look at me. Look at that. That's our Look ASMR that. for this. Let me. A nice. I got, got an Eddie Kingston. The microphone. I got Lance Archer and Eddie Kingston. That's a fantastic Kyle call. Kyle O'Reilly. Justin Roberts? Justin, I, I, Hell oh, this, yeah. Okay, low-key, this Justin uh, Roberts is pretty dope. He's got like a gold border. He looks dapper. He's the, oh, know. dude. Well, I, yeah, I, I got will, one of those. I, I see you're Justin Roberts, and I will uh, raise you Renee Paquette. Oh, oh, okay, okay. We're gonna have to get. We're gonna do this off air. We're gonna have to go through these. <laughs> but, but do you have? But do you have? The newly crowned All Elite Wrestling Tag Team Champions, the PP -Pee Boys, Private oh! Party. Mm. I don't. Uh, I've actually got uh, former tag team champions, the Ass Boys. <laughs> 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 oh, this is great. Uh, this is already my favorite podcast we've done in months. <laughs> so, we're just Nyla, trading cards. right? We're just trading cards through a digital screen. Uh, welcome back. It's been a while since you've been on the podcast. I think like we were in the middle of a pandemic the last time you we were can on. Measure it in years. It's we, been we can. a good chunk of time. It's been a very long time. Um, <laughs> Um, so it's it's a uh, couple weeks past Halloween, but I do want to bring up Halloween because one of my favorite things is I think you single handedly are keeping Spirit Halloween in business. <laughs> Not um, the Michael Myers mask right behind me, <laughs> right behind you, within <laughs> arms reach. But okay. Uh, how many of those giant skeletons do you have? Okay, so it's taken me what two three years to track one down because they're always sold out. So I only have one this time, but I, I do have, so, okay, let, a little bit more of a rewind. The giant, the what, 12 foot tall standing one. Yeah. Uh, like a year or two later, they released, uh, Party City released like, um, um, like a, I don't know, like a four or five foot ground breaker where it looks like it's coming out of the ground. And I was like, okay, everybody's got the tall boys. I'm gonna be a little different. I want the ground breaker. Could not find either of them for like two or three years. I found both of them this year. So I've got one of each. That's that's pretty decent. That's pretty yeah. decent. It's a start. It. My skeleton uh, army. My other favorite thing is, and you had told me you were going to do this, and I was still surprised by it. You dressed up as a potted plant backstage, <laughs> and as people walked by, you would scare them. <laughs> <laughs> And it was incredible. <laughs> like, I, how? Like, I, I only got the video, of course, of uh, of Sir Pentico, uh, which is always the, the, the best one to get. Um, however, th so that was the only instance I got to witness up close and personal. How did you come up with this costume? One. I, I cannot take full credit. But, but you, you, that was a one. So there's more questions. Get them out. Let's go. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> no. well, how did you come up with the costume? And then, like what goes into becoming a potted plant? <laughs> Believably, by the way, because like, if you look at it, you actually can't really tell until you jump out. Like I've watched this video like a hundred times and you can't tell until you've actually jumped out. Like, did you bring the pot with you in your check bag or did you find one at the venue? <laughs> Listen, okay, so I gotta be real with you. I, I cannot take credit for this. I don't know who the original creator is, but I seen a video online of a guy doing this like on Hollywood Boulevard or something like, he was out in the public just scaring the random public. And I thought <laughs> this was absolutely hilarious. 
kind of forgot about the video. It pops up a few months later. And I was like, man, this is hilarious. I should do something with this. But, and I never thought to look. I just assumed ghillie suits were crazy expensive. <laughs> they are not. They are dangerously affordable. So, <laughs> dangerously affordable. <laughs> dangerously affordable. So we can blame Jeff Bezos because I checked on Amazon and they shipped a ghillie suit directly to my house for a, a moderate sum. And, um, it, it, so I was like, oh, this, something is going to happen. I'm, I'm going to do the potted plant gimmick, whatever. And, and I'm calculating. Oh, yeah. How All right. I'm looking right now. There's, like, <laughs> it was why can you buy? <laughs> why can you buy these at Home Depot, by the way? I don't right, understand. Like, <laughs> it was it was totally like a half cooked idea. I was like, I need a ghillie suit and then I'll figure out the rest. So I got the ghillie suit. I've been bringing it to work for like a month. <laughs> I'm not surprised to hear that at all. <laughs> looking for an, looking for like the opportune time, and uh, I, I grabbed one of our uh, production assistants, one of our runners, who was like heading out, and I said, "Hey, listen, if I give you like thirty bucks, will you pick me up a giant plant pot that I don't know, say a human person could fit in?" He looks at me like I'm crazy, and I was like, you can keep the change. Like, this is your tip for doing this favor <laughs> for <fee>. me. <laughs> and he was like, actually, I do need to run out to Walmart. I got you. <laughs> so I'm receiving texts throughout the day of different, like, plant-sized pots. We get one. It's like, how's this one? Freaking perfect. Bring it. So we've been traveling around. I, I snuck it onto the prop drop. We've been traveling around for about a month with a ghillie suit and a giant potted plant <laughs> looking for the opportune time. And lo and behold, Fright Night Dynamite, the stage was set. There was a window of opportunity. I had to go now, 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 now. Didn't get a chance to set it up exactly the way I wanted it, but my target delivered themselves to me. So mm -hmm. that's half of the work. Half oh, the, the best part, the yeah, was like calling Sir Pitico over and being like, hey, yeah, you've got to do this photo shoot. Uh, and you had set up like right near uh, where Speedy's normally set up for pictures and all of that. And then it was like, uh, he comes over and he's like all ready. And then you jump oh, out yeah. and scare him. And they were like, and the, the, the worst part is that there's no pictures for you. <laughs> <laughs> half, half of the work of a good prank is getting your target lured to the location without any suspicion. So the oh, yeah. fact the fact that he was like, Hey, don't move. Stay here. I was like, okay. He runs off. I have to hurry and like organize things. The ghillie suit was still flipped inside out. Like I was, it was a race against time to get this off the ground. And I'm sitting there. Will, you said I look like a plant. I'm in the thing like there's no way. Like he's going to see me from a mile away. Like I just no, knew in my heart. Even, it looked like a even, Yeah, didn't even phase him. He just like walks right by like, yeah, let's just go take some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> got him oh my god it was As fantastic I tweeted, the only reason that video has not been published is that uh sir pentico was unmasked in this no! process yeah um yeah. it scared the mask right off of him i i don't know i don't since this is unrestricted i'll tell this little tidbit i i might mercedes monet might be a little upset with me i think i'm the reason camille lost the match <laughs> i like this is this is uh this is 100% true. On her way to the ring for the match. Like while we're live. While we are live during Dynamite, I had set the plan up in a hallway and just <laughs> jumping out, attacking people. Our doctor, Doc Samson, almost punched me in the face. I scared him so bad. <laughs> I jumped out and I said, hey, you ready? And like Camille attacked me with every free limb. I, she threw two kicks, a punch, a forearm. She knocked me on the ground and like started violently shaking me, yelling at me. So that that's a true story. That really happened. I 100% believe it. This is incredible. So my bad, Mercedes. Didn't mean to, you know, let your hinge chick get a get a pinfall on her. My bad. Yeah. Pull her focus. I also like that of like the 16 semi trucks that travel for dynamite, like one of them probably just has an assortment of costumes that Nyla Rose needs to have on hand. <laughs> this is AW unrestricted, not AW spill all the secrets. Um, isn't that kind of what unrestricted Those are synonymous. means? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine. Oh. Fine. All right. Well, um, on a more serious topic, uh, happy Native American Heritage Month. I know it is November. Very exciting. 
Um, and you are an incredible representative for the community. Um, I you. want to talk a little bit about what it means to be indigenous, the importance of uh, representation today, and just the responsibility that maybe you feel being in this role. Sure. Uh, it's it's a huge responsibility because, and I've said this n numerous times, um, you when you are in the entertainment industry, when you are in the spotlight, you are kind of put under a microscope, like every little thing you do. And I, and I never kind want of. to, yeah, kind <laughs> of. I, I never want to like misstep or, or do anything that's going to harm a community because no matter how I feel about it, you do become a representative of your community, whatever that may be, whoever you are as an individual. So it's a huge responsibility. It's a huge privilege and a huge honor to be in this position because it's, it's not just one sided, you know, the public has to accept you in that role. And for all intents and purposes, it seems that they have, um, though I might be a little more vocal about things. I am not the only indigenous person on the roster by a long shot. I'm not going to put anybody's business out there. I don't know if they want their business out there, but I, I can say I know JR has uh, some some indigenous heritage and he's very proud of it. Uh, Rebel. It has some indigenous heritage. She's also very proud of it as well. So that's not spilling any secrets. I don't think they'll be too upset for me throwing that out there. But um, ah. yeah, like I said, by a long shot, I am not the only one on the roster. Damn. Oh, man. And I'm just the only one that's a former champion. <laughs> oh, what's up? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we needed, I needed to buy a foghorn for this. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't, or a megaphone, oh. one of the two. <laughs> with uh, with Zay thing flex on them? Yeah, yeah, do the private party dance. I'm doing the sounds because if you're listening to this, you don't. That's you don't that's see for the, it. That's for the audio crowd. Hey, I like it. A true, true podcaster. Will, you're going to actually be replaced as a host. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Will's just going to take his hat off. And go, well, my work is done here. Well, anyway, this is, this is not. <laughs> I, I am all for this. I think Nyla would be a genuine draw on this show. I don't think there's anybody Aww. that cracks me up more than Nyla Rose. So uh, seriously, well. So when you got to uh, call out stick, tag me in. I got you. Oh, perfect. all right. Good well, to know. Uh, I think I may have to, to call out sick uh, in the moment <laughs> be simply because uh, I need a drink of water and we got to take a break. So let's do that Dude. right here on AW Unrestricted. And we'll have more with Nyla Rose after this. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey and Will with our guest, but potential future host. Tyler Rose. Uh, <laughs> He's already writing himself off the show. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Nyla, I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, you talked just a minute ago about being a former champion. Uh, and we all know you as the second AEW Women's World Champion. Uh, however, there's another belt you have a lot of history with, despite having not actually held it. <laughs> Um, I guess I can't use that term either because you oh, have I held it physically. Yeah, I was gonna yes. say physically you did. There was a point uh, where she stole it. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Language. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. But are, are uh, we, are we... <laughs> uh, you were at, at one point. Um, you have challenged quite a bit for the TBS Championship. Uh, most specifically, you were uh, you recently got the challenge this past summer, uh, Mercedes Monet for the TBS title. Uh, but again, that's a belt that, oddly enough, you have like a lot of history with, despite the fact that you haven't actually been TBS champion, uh, which is, I think, kind of an interesting accolade in itself. Um, and I kind of wanted to talk about your history with the TBS <laughs> championship a little bit. Yeah, uh, like you said, that is a very interesting accolade. And I, I don't even think I realized just how much history I have had with the championship. Um, I, yeah, I, I was very, very passionate about wanting to possess said championship. And there was an opportunity that arose. Okay, you know, for, for the sake of ease of podcast, we'll go with that. Sure. I, I, it's less weird. I acquired... <laughs> the TBS championship for a number of weeks um, and had a lot of fun I procured it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, it is a championship. I would love to own rightfully one day be have mm -hmm. truly in my possession. There's been a great lineage of lineage of history behind it. Uh, Julia Hart, um, Willow Nightingale, mm -hmm. come on, right? Chris Statlander. Uh, let's the current 
reigning and defending TBS champion Mercedes Monet. So I think while I may not be the second uh, rightful owner, being the second person in possession of it, I think is <laughs> <laughs> is a great accolade. But then to to scratch that asterisk out of the history books and, and say that I genuinely held it, had a genuine run with it, that would uh, mean the world to me personally. And it is a goal of mine, something I definitely wish to do. So one of my favorite things about Nyla that doesn't get shared publicly enough is that she's one of those people that when you need someone who is seasoned and professional to fill in a role last minute, like she is the go-to person. The amount of times where a dark match has come up and it's like, oh, we need to have one. Oh, Nyla can go in there and just like beat up an extra. This is going to be great. And without hesitation, she's phenomenal every time. But this also happens on Dynamite sometimes. And there was a number of weeks back, there was supposed to be a match and it didn't happen because a talent couldn't make it. And all of a sudden, like card subject to change, we're changing it up. And you ended up in a women's world title number one contendership four way with Willow, with Soraya, with Jamie Hayter. Uh, what is it like being someone who, like, one, the company can rely on, and two, being in that moment with all of these incredible uh, people on our roster? Yeah, uh, I, you know, it's it's a little bit of a, a trite cliche expression, but if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Oh. And <laughs> and um, the the business that we're in, it hits twofold, right? Uh, card subject to change is synonymous with professional wrestling. We are a very physical sport. We are entertainment on top of that. So anything can go left at any minute. You just have to be ready at a, at the drop of a hat um, to to jump in there and 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 rock it out, right? Like. You never know when you're going to get an opportunity. It could be right around the corner and you don't even know it. So if you're like the kind of person who hangs back and is is not in top form, ready to go, it might pass you by. And I, and I don't take that lightly. Like, I know what this business is. I was an actor before a professional wrestler. I know how the entertainment side of things can be. And it's it's doubly so when you throw in professional wrestling. So you just you just have to be ready for any and everything. Um, your mind has to be ready. You might have to do a promo uh, at, at a last minute to help out with something. And and that's what it really is is, is helping out. You know, it's a team individual sport, and I think <laughs> that's lost on a lot of people. I take a lot of pride in helping build this company up, being one of the first women on the roster. Um, that is that is something I wear. Is I, I don't shy away from it. I'm very public about how proud I am to have been a part of that and how proud I am of the growth of this company. Um, it's my baby. You know, I helped nurture it. Like, you know, it's not just me, but like one of one of the, the very many who, who right there from the get go. So if I can do anything to jump in there and help this baby bloom, I'm going to do it. Uh, well, let's talk about that a little bit. That the fact is, you are one of the originals uh, from the AEW roster. When you go back to the uh, the Double or Nothing press conference in Vegas and uh, the introduction of the women's roster, and you getting to be a part of that, um, uh, you know, fast forward all the way to today, five and a half years later, and we've seen the roster bloom and uh, we've seen it grow so much. We've seen so many names get added, uh, and we've seen names depart. We've seen it all go, but you have been the one constant here since day one. Um, talk to me a little bit about the the growth and transition and change of the women's roster and what you've seen and uh, how you've got to be a part of it all along. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. We, we um, as a growing company, uh, the landscape has changed on not just our end of things, but in the uh, world of professional wrestling as a whole. You know, everybody likes to complain that we might be the company where a lot of people end up from other places. Well, the reality is there was no other place for a long time. Like, thank you. Hello. <laughs> Of course, everyone was in one company because there was only one company. How are we missing this fact?
<laughs> so now you know, Macs don't exist get, on the internet. I, I, I do want to say real quick. You know what gets me about that is that, um, like, I look at that as like a, a genuinely good thing, right? Where like there are times where I find myself sitting in a room and I look around and I go, man, there's so much wrestling history in this room right now. Where like we've got royalty from WWE, but then over here we've got. TNA represented. We've got Ring of Honor represented over here. We've got WCW represented over here. And like, the fact is that to see all of that converge in AEW is cool. Like, I it's don't know. Awesome. Like, we're not supposed to just grow wrestlers out of nowhere. Like, that's not how it's, this works. But it's super. But but that's the thing. That's the duality of it. Is when we try to do that, they complain. Who's this person? I don't know this person. I don't want to do any work. Tell me who this person is. Bet we got you. This person, this person wants to come here. You know this person. Oh, why are you using this person? Eh, why don't you do your own thing? We we can't. Well, how do we can't do both? Pick pick one. But but that but that's just it, right? Like for the longest time, there was one place where if this was your dream, if this is what you wanted to do, you had one option. TNA sprouted up. They they started making a name for themselves. Started making waves. Now you got two companies, right? But still, AEW doesn't even exist yet. You want to flash forward a bunch of years. Now we have a third major player on the playing field. Different taste in every different company. It's all done different ways. So now, as a performer, you've got options for how you want to express your art, how you want to express your craft. But some fans can't see past that, and that's a little bit frustrating. It's like, we get it. You like one thing, and you want your favorite person in that thing. But did you ever stop to think for one second that your favorite person wants to do it their way in this place? If Boom. you really support this person, if you really support this individual, you'll watch them at this place that they are in love with and that they're having a good time. Because it really seems to me that you like the name brand of XYZ. Mm, drop! Yeah, like I would drop this mic if it wasn't like just attached to something, but yeah. damn. Like, yeah, I was it's, gonna say I, mine's kind of heavy. It would do some damage to his death. Yeah, it's like, Will, you just redid a bunch of stuff in your house. You don't want to cost you. You want it unrestricted. You got unrestricted, baby. I, but I mean, that's such a good point, though, right? Because it's like, that's the beauty of that wrestling. That was a great like, Mark Briscoe there, by the way. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 can't let, I can't let that go. That was great. <laughs> uh Oh, it was so good. I love everything about this episode. It's fantastic. Nyla's fantastic. Uh, ignore all the haters on Twitter. Honestly, like, Nyla should be the only one you're following on Twitter anyway. Um, and we got a little bit more coming up with Nyla here on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up shortly after this quick break. AEW Unrestricted. We are recording this episode with the one, the only, the amazing Nyla Rose, one of my absolutely favorite people backstage. And uh, I don't say that just to blow smoke up her ass on this episode. Like I legitimately mean it. Um, and instead of uh, inflating her ego, we're going to play a little game. <laughs> Uh, as mentioned before, at the top of the show, Upper Deck is one of our amazing sponsors of the show. They're incredible. So we're going to play a little game with Nyla and she's such a big Upper Deck trading card fan. <laughs> uh, I pulled a couple cards uh, from one of my decks recently. Oh, no. And I'm going to read the bio on the back, and I want to see if you can guess uh, who, oh. who these people are. <laughs> I don't talk oh, that, to my coworkers. I don't learn about them. No. Oh, this it's, is going to be so much fun. you product, you're good. <laughs> yes. I mean, if the bios in the back were real, like, <laughs> mine uh, would just be straight up like oyster farmer. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've got a few All right, great first ones. one. Uh, this is a tag team. Uh, blank and blank. First team together in AEW in a no disqualification match versus Darby Allen and Sting at full gear on November 19th in 2022. Let me check my cards. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez. Against Darby Allen and Sting at full gear. Oh, man. Listen, I don't even remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. And you're right? asking me, oh, is it FTR? <laughs> I know it's not. I know it's not. But that's it is Jay Lethal oh! and Jeff Jarrett. Damn, that was at full gear? That was a full gear, yeah. yeah. It feels forever oh, ago, right? It does. All right, all right, I, I got one. All right, all right, all right. What do you got, right, Will? Here we go. Ready? Okay. Ready. Um, and 
<laughs> this is one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, mainly because um, I'll, I'll give you one hint that's not here, and then you'll automatically know it. Uh, that Don't give it away. No, no, no. This, this, this hint is great. But first, I'll read. With a victory over Red Velvet on Dynamite on November 15th, 2023, Blank earned her spot in a three-way match for Chris Statlander's TBS Championship at Full Gear. Uh, your hint is that uh, social media fell into a near gang war over the announcement of this match. What kind of hint is that? <laughs> That red a, velvet a... ver, red velvet versus who who fell into nearly a gang war on social media <laughs> julia hart the answer was sky blue oh yeah. my god you don't remember the whole red versus blue stuff it was great <laughs> Yeah, I, when you said, okay, when you said gang war here, it went over my head, but then you said sky blue, it all came together. I do yes. remember that. Uh, Is it wrong uh, that when I hear red versus blue, I think of Halo, and I don't yes. think of, like... Yes. <laughs> no, that, those are the two things. It was either red versus blue or, like, Bloods and Crips. It was great. It was, yeah. uh... <laughs> yeah, no, I... I... I am fantastic. Doing I'm gonna get beat up at work. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure if you went up to someone and said, hey, did you know you won this match? They go, wait, what? <laughs> oh, okay. the amount of stuff. That is I, I got one you cannot fail at. Are you ready? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Blank has a unique connection with AEW fans thanks to their positive and uplifting attitude, but their opponents would be smart to not take them lightly when the bell rings. I had to be uh, a little bit uh, ambiguous with pronouns here. Is that Brody King? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go with Willow Nightingale on that one. You are correct. That is Willow Nightingale. <laughs> there's there's the is, shoot answer and the kayfabe answer. <laughs> she is a, <laughs> she is a uh, 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 I don't know a, a noxious ray of sunshine. She is dangerously positive. <laughs> I've seen her on a bad day and she's still positive. Like, <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, all right. This, this has been great. Uh, I do want to get to, uh, something that you're familiar with. So we have a Q and no A, uh, which is one of the things <laughs> that you do. Uh, again, one of the amazing things that you do on Twitter that I absolutely love. Um, so we've got some questions from your recent, uh, Q and no A, um, so uh, there, this one comes from someone that you may may detest, so we, we can skip it if you want. Um, but uh, Suprensko, um, who would win in a fight, uh, Jackie Chan holding a baby versus Jackie Chan holding a bunch of faces, but he doesn't want any trouble? <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> I'm not... Uh, no, no. Okay, I'll answer them here. Let, let's answer the questions here. Uh, this, this is a tough one because I grew up on Jackie Chan. Um, I, I love Jackie Chan. And, and as anybody who's a fan might know, that's a staple. If he has a baby, he's going to save some vases, but he don't want no trouble. So, ever. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to say... I'm going to say vases. I'm going to say vases is going to win because he would toss the baby to a bad guy. Nobody wants to hurt a baby. You no. toss the baby to the bad guy. The bad guy's going to catch it. He'll kick the knee out. The baby goes up. Jackie Chan catches the baby. He like does a fancy kick, tosses it to another bad guy. And this is going to go on and on and on. So my, my, my answer is vases because more, more, more of that's going to go into play. You know, you just described that whole fight scene, and 100%, I would expect to see it in a future Jackie Chan movie. <laughs> if he's listening, I know he's I, a I, huge I, fan of the show. <laughs> I appreciate that Serpentico's name on social media is Viper Parabo. That um, uh, pops me huge. Um, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> of course you hate it. <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got uh, JHS Bassman. Bassman? Bassman, maybe? I don't know. Um, says he what mounted Mortal to Kombat... the wall singing. <laughs> <laughs> what Mortal Kombat fatality would you pick for Snake Man? Ooh, ooh, like to give him or that he does? I have the same. Uh, yeah, I. Oh, because the same thing. you because should answer both. 
if it's, mm. if it's that I would give him one of my all time favorites. Uh, I, I don't know what it's called. I call it the sawmill. It's when Kung Lao takes his hat. He throws oh, okay, it to too. the yeah. ground. Yeah, it, it's going and he grabs a person, just pulls them over the thing ah, like yeah, a yeah, log. Yeah, yeah. I, I would do that, but I would do it very slow. <laughs> really, just make sure it hurts. <laughs> really slowly. Uh, I would actually give Serpinico an animality so that he turns his opponent into like a dragon or like a tiger that would then attack him and end up mauling him to death. That's accurate. Wait, the animality is for yourself, though. No, no, no. But you, that, that was the second part of the question, what would I give him? I would give him an animality so that he yeah. would turn his opponent to something and then still get killed. Right. Okay. This is Serpentico okay. we're talking yeah. e- about. Either yes. way this happens, Serpentico's demise is my joy. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a question from Wildfire. Uh, who would win in a triple threat cage match? Serpentico, John well. Cruz, or Ben Dejo? <laughs> Woo! Uh, me. I, I I would win because I'm great friends with Ben. I'm great friends with John. I love these guys to death. I really wish they would get a Twitter so that we could gang up on Sir Pinnico. Yes. Um, so I think, and, and that's the thing. He's such an idiot. He, he is constantly provoking John and Ben. They no doubt would team up on him. There's no way Sir Pinnico is winning this. I don't know who's going to win between John and Ben. They are, you know, for a lot of reasons, very equal in a lot of ways. But I think they would team up and just make sure Serpentico absolutely does not win. Uh, let's see. Rob Tussin asks, uh, <laughs> it's a great name. Um, favorite letter of the alphabet? Um, hmm, that's tough. I do like I because it's got the dot over top of it. It's like it's like you get two things for the price of one uh, mm. when it's lowercase, of course. Um, but J J has a little hook. It's like a, it's like a woo. It's like a fun little whoop, you know. So that's very very tough toss up. Of course, you like the little hook. All yeah. right. Um, <laughs> uh, this one's great. Uh, Jeff Penderson, MD. What is your go to karaoke song? <laughs> Um. Th- oh, th- this does okay. the answer have to be appropriate? <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple. I have a couple. Uh, I I would say the one that I tend to get asked to do very often is uh, "Without Me" by Eminem. Oh yeah. Or I've seen you do that. <laughs> or the internet is for porn from Avenue Q. Yeah, I've also seen because that. <laughs> I I tend to do all the different voices, and it's always a good time. That was one of my most incredible nights on the road when we were all in that karaoke <laughs> bar. And uh, I think it was Jersey. It's I Jersey. Remember. Planet Rose, baby. Shout out Planet oh, Rose. Buddy. I think Alex Abrahentis was somebody's backup dancer. Like, yes. what a wild night. Yes. It was wild. I won a trophy. Yes, you did. It was it was fantastic. <laughs> I, I think at one point, like, uh, John Cruz put in a uh, song request. It was like, cool, the line is 50 people. It's yeah. Like, oh, God. <laughs> 20 of them are Nyla. <laughs> It got crazy. <laughs> it it did. It very much did. All right. Uh, it it got crazy, much like this episode. This was absolutely incredible and phenomenal. Much like yourself. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, you. If you yeah. don't follow Nyla on Twitter, uh, there. Why the hell are you on Twitter in the first place? Uh, follow her on Twitter and on Instagram, Nyla Rose Beast. Uh, she's absolutely incredible. AEW Unrestricted is sponsored in part by Upper Deck. Collect your favorite wrestlers in the 2024 Upper Deck AEW and start your trading card collection today. Unwrap autograph, memorabilia, premium tech inserts. Visit UpperDeck.com to learn more. You can listen to and follow this podcast, AEW Unrestricted, at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the video episodes on YouTube so you can see all of the amazing cards we had uh, on our YouTube channel at AEW Unrestricted. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Don't forget Forget Dynamite, TBS, Wednesdays, Rampage, TNT, Fridays, Collision, Live, Saturdays, TNT, ROH streams every Thursday on Honor Club. I'm Aubrey Edwards, along with my co-host, Nyla Rose, and my guest, Will Washington. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted.